One of the things we discovered when responsive web design came along, or rediscovered really, is that the web is flexible. I feel like though CSS Grid takes things to a whole new level. I surprise myself with some of the demos that I'm making when I realize how flexibility actually works in the world that has CSS Grid. It comes in two stages at times. There's other ways that we can make content flexible. It's much more powerful than responsive design has been. And I think we really want to open ourselves up to the possibility of what it means to create flexible websites. This is an example of something I've just run across in the last couple of years that I think, wow, okay, what would it be to take this poster and make it into a website? What would it mean to make this flexible? How would it, should it squish? Where should it expand? How should it fill a bigger space or shrink down to a smaller space? We could just make it grow and shrink like, you know, it just stays exactly the same. It just gets bigger and smaller. But I want to do something more interesting than that. So I put together a, one possibility of how the word dare and film could slide behind each other in order to make more, make it take up space, make it smaller. These are the kinds of things that we can do with grid that were not possible by using floats and percentage based widths. We are used to doing layout measured in pixels, in M's or REM's, in percents, in thinking that we have the option of fixed things like pixel sizes or flexible things like percents. We'll still have those, although I really do feel like defining grid columns or grid rows in percents really doesn't make sense. I find myself using M's a lot or even pixels a lot and using some of these other units of flexibility that I'm going to show you. So why is it that it's different? Because we have min content, max content, FR, and min max. So I'm going to show you what these mean in three separate videos. In this video, I'm going to do min content and max content. In the next video, I'm going to explain FR units, and then I'm going to explain what min max gives us. So here's another example. Jan Chickold, this beautiful advertisement for a lecture from 1927. So I looked at this and thought, how should this be of and for the web? How should it be flexible? At what places should the layout collapse? At what places should it expand? How is it that it should rejigger based on the amount of content or the amount of space that's available? And the first thing I did in trying to understand how to convert this to a grid-based layout is just take a really awful photograph and open it up in a quick sketching program and draw lines. So, okay, I figured out that I'm, this, is where, these, this is where I'm going to put my lines. I'm going to have these four columns. I'm going to have these five rows. And then I looked at that free entry part of the graphic and realized that free entry lines up on the left along with the paragraph that's above it and the other s small red headline that's above it. And on the right, it lines up with the black headline and with the name Chickold and with the black box, right? That's where those two lines are on the two sides of the phrase that says free entry in German. So how could it that I could maintain the integrity of this layout by keeping all of those things lined up, no matter how big the content is or how many words there might be? Uh, and what I end up do, do, doing is assigning that column the width of max content in order to do that, in order to keep everything all lined up. So how in the world, what does that mean, max content? So if you think about a box, maybe you define a fixed width box and you pour text into it, the text is going to wrap inside that box. It's going to fill it up as much as it can and it's going to jump to the next line. But if we take off that fixed width and then we instead say we want this box to be max content width, for text, what it will do is it will stretch the text out to as long as it can possibly be, and it will make the box be the length of that phrase of text. No longer, no shorter. Min content, you take that same box of text and you squish it, squish it, squish it into be the minimum that it can possibly be without letting any of those words stick out or without forcing the layout to break in some way. So for text, it basically means min content is going to be the length 
of the longest word. It will put kind of every word on a separate line, except when two of them fit. But the longest word, whatever the longest word is, it will be on a line by itself, and the box will be the width of that particular line. So if I say max content, define my second column to be the width of max content, then it will mean that the width of that column will be the width of the phrase free entry, no longer, no shorter. And then the the new typography, the phrase, the title in black is going to be, is going to start right at the beginning of that line and it's going to line up with everything above it. I also applied a max content width to the very, very first column because then the first and sec second columns together are max content and that's going to make the first and second columns together be the width of the name Jan Tichold. And then that very last column, I applied a min content to that column, which is going to make it the width of the second word, which is the longest word in that particular sentence, except for that very last word right before the number 14C, which is longer, but I cheated so that I could match the original by putting a hyphen in there. But ignore that, ignore the hyphen. It's going to be the other longest word, the longest word that doesn't have a hyphenation in it. Uh, so that's that's going to get that box to be mid content. And then I just made the other column that's left, that third column, I set that to be 1FR, which basically just says, make this have the rest of the space. And we get this layout. So it's flexible. Certain things kind of stay the size that they need to be to keep the integrity of this layout. And other things are wrapping and moving around. I could work on this a little bit longer and kind of think about how else I might want to best represent Jan Chichol's work, but this is pretty good. This is pretty, this gets us pretty far. And you can also see that if I change the name to Chichold or free, 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 free entry, that the integrity of that layout holds together. Why is this important? Well, maybe this is uh, inspiration that we use to do a more realistic content layout for a content management system. And we're not really sure how much content there's gonna be. It's always a little bit different. Or maybe we do wanna represent this and we're gonna translate it into seven different languages and the different languages are different. And the content lengths, it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of Grid. You get flexibility while giving uh, us the power to do great layouts no matter how much content there is. So that's min content and max content. In the next video I will show you what FR units are.